Hello. I can't always feel energetic or motivated to do a job, prepare a meal or go for a walk. Am I alone in this? Especially over the past year when our lives have been so restricted because of the pandemic. Not least because we're constantly hearing about the effect of Covid on so many people. It can make us depressed and end up lacking motivation to get up and go. However, there have been some wonderful accounts of bravery, selflessness and kindness too. People delivering shopping, walking dogs and so many people raising money for various causes by walking, running, singing and even sleeping in the garden in a tent for a year. I was watching the television coverage about the, the young man who had both his legs amputated after an accident when he was racing. He's now 21 and back in the driving seat. Every bit of film I've seen of him shows a cheerful, happy, determined man who refuses to allow his injuries to rule his life. It reminded me of a book my friend recommended to me about a New Zealand professional mountaineer, Mark Inglis, who also lost both his legs. He won a silver medal in 2000 Olympics in, Sy in Sydney as a cyclist, and he's the first W amputee to reach the top of Mount Everest. There are so many stories of courage and determination that we can read about. It makes me feel quite ashamed when I compare my own weakness when things go wrong. How can I compare my day-to-day -day annoyances with the life-changing things that happen to some people? I'm sitting in the sunshine writing this. The tulips are showing a bit of colour in the pots on the patio. We have the French doors open, a feeling of spring in the air. Soon we'll be able to see our family again and to go into shops and browse instead of everything being done online. Our churches are open again. So how do I deal with my lethargy? Or perhaps I should call it laziness or maybe lack of motivation. Well, I tend to make a cup of tea, that always helps, and go and do something simple. I might water the plants on the windowsill, clean the hob, anything just to get me moving then usually I can snap out of the negative mood and get a plan in action. I'm sure you have your own ways of motivating yourself. The important thing is, I think, to recognise the need to avoid becoming bored or fed up. I don't think I ever got a chance to be bored when I was younger. The difficult bit was to try to juggle quite a few jobs at the same time. I see young mums rushing around with babies in prams and toddlers, all doing their shopping, and I can't say I envy them. But of course I did all that, and now I can do all the things I never had time for, well within reason. I find found the tricky thing was that when I retired was to realise there was no timetable anymore and I had been in school all my life from the age of four until I was 65, either learning or teaching. And now I don't even have to jump to the clock alarm, let alone the lesson bell. I was told of a man who when he retired from the police force said that's it, I'm going to enjoy being lazy. He lived two more years, just into his early fifties. What a waste. Can I show you my little orchid here? This little orchid was nearly dead. I, in fact, I nearly threw it away. And I thought, well, I'm going to repot it. So I got some of that special stuff, uh, special bark. And it's bravely flowered. I'm so thrilled with it. And that's really not giving up, is it? I was looking to see what it said in the Bible about laziness, and here are a couple of quotes. In Proverbs, laziness casts one into a deep sleep, and an idle person will suffer hunger. That's for uh, chapter nine, um, Proverb 19. And in Proverb 18, he who is slothful in his work is a brother to him who is a great destroyer. And very poetic and a bit harsh, I think. But then we have more encouraging quotes in the New Testament. And in Luke we can read, Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. And then he told them this parable of the persistent widow who kept going back to the judge for justice against her adversary, and she got her way in the end. And in Philippians Paul says, I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learnt the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. 
So let us thank God for his strength when we're weak, for his help and support when we're low and unable to get on with life. When we think we're alone and nobody's around to energise us, we are wrong. There he is, waiting for us to ask for help. Amen.